okay, well, this is a really pretty spot we've set up in. You can see there's a good stream flow and uh, some uh, pretty dense uh, rainforest type of country on the banks. Um, the water's an unusual colour. I think there's a tannin in the water. Anyway, I've set up the sluice and uh, I'll just run a few uh, pans through that to see that I've got the angle and the speed rider. It's a bit deep on the bottom end, I think, but um, we'll see how we go. And I'll just keep adjusting that accordingly. Uh, I've got about an inch of water running across that dream mat. Um, I'll classify a bit of gravel and uh, we'll just see how the first few uh, runs go. So as you can see, um, this creek's been in flood recently because there's a bit of debris out on the bank uh, further down that I had a look at. Sort of had a bit of a read of the creek before I set this up. So as you can see here, we've got the fine sandy material and you've got coarser uh, gravel and cobbles and things. So I'll, I'll try to find a good spot where I can dig some, um, some wash to feed this sluice. As you can see, someone's had a big dig in the bank over there, so I'll just open up one of these old holes or just try some of this stuff here just to see how it's running first. Okay, I'm just going to work in this old hole that someone's been working on here. I uh, haven't seen any bedrock around. There'll be some further upstream, I'll go and have a later. But I'll just work in this deep wash. Um, I, could get, I might even try, try some of the higher up stuff because of the recent floods, but I'll definitely work this hole. We'll do a few pans through there. I've got the Garrett's uh, classifying sieve, that's about a 10 mil. Uh, ideally I'd need to go finer for the sieving, but uh, I'll use that today because uh, that's all I've got with me. And um, we'll just use that minus 10 mil classified material in the sluice down in the creek there. So what I'll do now, I'll just uh, classify this here. Open these, I'll just use all this wash here, put through the sieve. There's some big belly boulders in here, it's not bedrock. Right? This wash could be very, very deep. But they'd be fine going up in this stuff. I'll just throw the other side up on the bank. I'm just going to check this uh, oversize to make sure there's no nuggets bigger than 10 mil in there. If there is, I'll be pretty excited, but it wasn't in that way. So I'll just uh, dig a few pans out of here, and then uh, I'll get back to you when I'm down on the sluice uh, working it straight down in the river. Okay, I've adjusted the angle of the sluice. Well, actually, it's in a new position. Uh, because there wasn't enough flow on the sluice, I've got a good slope going. I've just trickled a bit of sand in. This isn't the wash I dug. Just to check how it's running, and it's just running beautifully off the end of the sluice. And the heavies are getting retained in those little vortexes on the dream mat, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'll start running that bucket of uh, gravel through here now. Okay, I've got the uh, this gold trap pan. I've got the uh, classified material in it. And we're going to start feeding the uh, top end of the sluice here. I'm pretty happy with the flow and the angle. So I'll, I'll run a few pans through here. And then we'll do a quick clean up to make sure we're getting a bit of colour from the spot I'm uh, working. And then we'll uh, start doing a few hours of uh, proper sluicing once I'm happy that I'm getting colour. So off we go. Look at material this. I just like the look of it. Lovely wash. All the water worn gravel and the black sand and the fines in here just look great. Gotta stir that up every now and then. Make sure because I really haven't classified this to an ideal size. So I'll stir up the big stuff so it gets carried off in the stream. And then we're not we're not chogging up the top of the sluice.
Okay, I've put about half a dozen uh, super sluice lobes through the little uh, sluice box here. So I don't want to do too much more until I know whether I'm getting colour out of that spot I'm in. Now he's working there all day for not getting colour. So uh, I'll wash this mat out now, see if we've got any colour, and then I know I can keep working that hole. Otherwise I'll move to another sample spot and we'll keep repeating that until we get uh, good uh, colour all day. So first thing is we'll get the sluice out of the water. Now this uh, mini dream mat is just a matter of undoing a couple of uh, swing nuts. You pull the mat out and wash it out in a bucket. Just got to be careful I don't uh, upend this mat obviously before I get it to the bucket of water. Gonna invert this mat, make sure all the uh, heavies and every particle that's on it goes into the bucket. That looks pretty good. Can't see anything on there. So that's a clean mat. Now what we're gonna do, we'll get the uh, the little gravity trap pan and we'll uh, pan off the fines that came off the bottom of the dream mat and see if we've got any gold in it. Here we go. Now I've got to make sure to get the residue out of the bottom because that's where the heavies are going to be. Make sure the bucket's nice and clean. It's all in the pan. All good. All right. So now we'll just take the pan down and uh, pan off these fines in the creek. Right, well, here's the fines out of the sluice. About six runs of pan through it. Let's pan it off now in the stream and uh, let's see what we've got. So as with any panning situation, this is pretty clean because it's been sluiced. There's not much, as you can see, there's not much cloudy water coming out of that. It's just a matter of getting the heavies in the bottom and working them across the riffles, keeping the material in suspension, bring the water back. I mean, everyone develops their own panning technique, but uh, the clear and obvious oversize you can throw out by hand. Think about these garret pans with the 90 degree riffles, you won't miss any gold. What I'm saying is if there's gold in here, the, the pan will take it. So we're getting into the small stuff now and it'll only be the heavies left. I could probably confidently uh, brush a lot of it off the back of my hand, but we'll just keep working it. Because I've got a lot of material here. Because uh, that little dream mat, uh, you only really get the concentrates, which is really good. Minimises the work. Okay. Well, we can see a lot of black sand for a start. So let's get the camera up close and see if we've got any colour. Well, here's the results of that first sluice run of the day. I've got uh, tons and tons of uh, very small flakes, quite a bit of black sand, and two reasonable size flakes which is my first New Zealand gull which is nice you can uh, maybe see that there there's a piece there and there's another one up in here uh, not retirement fun stuff but uh, so I don't think that hole's terribly productive well I can see it's not so I'm going to move to another spot and try another spot and we'll keep uh, keep it this all day it's just a lot of fun so it's really good temperature today there's a little bit of drizzle rain water's nice and cool uh, it's easy digging yeah it's a lot of fun little sluice is awesome uh, so that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of information I got out of that hole because um, there's no use persisting there. I'll, I'll go upstream a bit for a bit of a scout, so we can see a bit of bedrock and shallower ground where I can dig some rock bars and that kind of thing. But um, I hope you can see that. I'll take some still shots of this gold, which will make it look bigger than what it is, which is what we all want to see. So uh, there we go. Okay. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of sluicing. I'll carry on for the rest of the day and report back. Well the weather's closing in a little bit, I've retreated into the rainforest here. New Zealand's just spectacular. Very different gold fields to what I'm used to. Um, that little gold rat sluice, just awesome, had a lot of fun with that. We've got a little bit of colour in that first hole. Uh, not enough to what the amount of work we put into it, but I'll go further upstream and see if we can find some uh, gravel runs or rock bars around bedrock areas. 
maybe get some more samples um, later in the day. If I uh, do get some nice colour, I'll photograph it, put it on the video. Right, so here behind me you can see an old drive that's put into the hillside by Chinese miners here in uh, West Coast New Zealand, the 1860s. And they're looking for the old deep lead. So the auriferous wash is inside the hill here. I suggest on top of the hill have sunk a couple of shafts or costines to see if they can cut that wash off. And this drive uh, will lead us to where they were mining. So what we're going to do now is go into this tunnel behind us and uh, see what evidence we've got of the old Chinese diggings. So this will be barren ground for a while and then we'll hit the old deep lead where the wash uh, containing the gold was discovered. Let's get in and have a look. Okay, so at this point you can see the drive branches off in two directions. And if you look at the country they're cutting here, there's, there's no wash here. You can actually still see the pick marks from the 1870s when they chopped their way in. I think the tunnel's collapsed up ahead. And this way, maybe they ran two drives to find where that wash layer was. But as you can see, this is just like a clay, actually it's sandstone, I think. Let's have a look at that. It's a sandstone. So. Now, have a look at this. You can see that they've hit the wash at the end of the tunnel. Have a look at this. The big belly boulders. Here's the auriferous wash they were uh, searching for. Look at these beautifully water-worn boulders that have been glaciated and rolled around for millions of years. And look where they've tunneled in here seeking that gold bearing layer. Wow. You can see that's quite different to the uh, that sandstone drive we walked through. This is the uh, river wash. Back in here, oh well, here we go. We've got some old uh, props. And this is the old deep lead, look at that. It's an ancient riverbed full of gold. And so this all went back out that tunnel that was washed in the big sluice boxes down in the creek. Fantastic bit of history. Look at the way they've chopped their way. I mean, the sandstone's pretty easy going. They wouldn't have been blasting. It was all hand uh, pick and shovel work. All through this barren country rock to the old deep lead deep in the mountain. Fantastic. Okay, this is difficult to film because it's dark, obviously, and uh, raining out here, but Look at this drive here, this is a bit further on from that one I just explored. Beautifully curved. It curves round to the left, probably to intersect that area of um, deep lead that they were working in that other tunnel. And they're trying to find another run of that gravel and cobbles uh, further into the hill. So they've curved towards the area they were mining previously. That's uh, amazing how yeah, they've just done that. Fantastic history and it's great that it's preserved here and it's uh, hasn't been vandalized or there's no rubbish around, it's just great. Here's a good example here of a 19th century tail race. The water was directed through these cuts. This wasn't an auriferous area where they could wash the gravel. It goes down through the tunnel and discharges onto the creek further down. So they were washing the gravel in the big sluice boxes, the big wooden sluice boxes, down on the creek line. And they're getting the water from higher up on another creek line to wash the gravel. So this was all put in, in the uh, late 1900s. An enormous amount of work to get to those gravels, which are obviously very rich to justify this kind of uh, engineering, if you like. Well, what we've done now, relocated further upstream, as you can see behind me, there's a confluence of two creeks. 
and I'm standing on an inside bend with a couple of uh, nice boulders which would form low pressure zones on the inside bend. Um, it's pretty fine wash so uh, I've got that 10 mil sieve so I should be well sieved by that. So we're going to take a few samples here um, and run it through the box up in this area and see if we can get some better colour than what we did further downstream. So uh, we'll get into it here and I'll report back shortly. Well, okay, we've been in this area about an hour and a half. We've done a dozen uh, sieved, classified, large gold pan fulls of material through this sluice box, and we're getting a lovely run of colour, and I'll show you where I got it from. You can see this is an inside bend. It's a confluence of two creeks, so in flood this would be a low pressure zone, and that creek's pushing into here. This is where I'm working here, and I've hit a, a, a like a slight clay layer. It's a dark brown clay amongst the roots of this rainforest trees and uh, we're getting a lot of colour out of that so it's like a false bottom it's the, the fine gold is sticking in the side on this inside bend up in that high layer because really the wash in this creek would be quite deep it could be several meters I, I don't see any bedrock and the bottom could be anywhere so this tiny hole I've dug has been very productive I'm going to keep working this and uh, we'll put another dozen through and keep cleaning that little sluice up um, and we get a nice run of colour here it's really good Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, uh, sluicing in New Zealand and uh, exploring some of those old mines. Um, it's like any kind of gold prospecting, you just got to sample in the right areas. So um, do a, two, a few test runs here and there until you get a nice hot spot in the creek and, uh, and you're continually getting good colour and look for those places where you uh, expect gold to be, such as your inside bends, your low pressure zones. Um, you have a lot of fun and uh, you're in the outdoors and you go home with a bit of colour, so it's been uh, a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and happy fossicking. Bye for now.